Hi everyone, let's talk about the degree of the zero polynomial. We have the convention that the degree of zero as the polynomial zero is equal to negative infinity. And this might seem kind of strange because that's not even a number. So let's look at the origins of this convention. Before we do that, let's make sure that everyone knows what degree means. A polynomial looks like this. f of x in one variable is equal to a n for some a n, let's say a real or complex number, x to the power of n plus a n minus 1, x to the n minus 1, all the way through to a 2 x squared plus a 1 x plus a 0. And the degree is this n, the exponent of the highest of the leading term. So the highest exponent. So if f of x is equal to let's say 3x to the power of 4, then the degree is 4. And if f of x is equal to, let's say, 5x squared plus 3, then the degree is 2. And if f of x is equal to just the constant 10, then the degree is 0 because this is times x to the power of 0. There's, it's an invisible x to the power of 0 over there. But the problem is, what if it equals to 0? We could say the degree is 0 in that case, but some things don't quite work out, and we'll see exactly why. So let's say f and g are non-zero polynomials. then a couple of identities, or at least relations, are true. The first one is that if we have the degree of f plus or minus g, that's less than or equal to the maximum of degree of f and degree of g. And that's because you can't exceed the degree of f or the, you can't exceed the the degree of the highest among degree of f and degree of g. Um, that's because you're just adding or subtracting two polynomials, so you can't get anything bigger than the highest term out of the two. But it can be anything less than the highest term because terms might cancel out. And secondly, we have an actual identity, not an inequality, which says that the degree of f times g is equal to the degree of f plus the degree of g. And this should be clear because if we take the leading terms, let's say a n x to the n, and we multiply by the other leading term, let's say of g, which is b m x to the m, we get a n b m x to the n plus m. So we're adding the degrees, and no other term can have a higher degree. That's not too difficult to prove. So the question is, can we extend these identities to when f or g equals to 0? So some problems start coming up when we do substitute in zero. So let's see what happens. If it does hold, then the following should be true. For the second identity, we're going to start with that one. We get that, let's say g is equal to zero. So then we get degree of f times zero should be degree of f plus degree of 0, but g is just 0. 
So f times 0 will equal to 0. So that's interesting. The degree of 0 needs to equal the degree of f plus the degree of 0. Well, if the degree of 0 is a real number, that would imply that the degree of f is 0, which is not necessarily true. So what we need or want is that the degree of 0 equals to n plus degree of 0 for all n in the non-negative integers. That's impossible for any real number. So degree of 0 is not a real number. What that means is that we have a couple of candidates. We can say degree of 0 is infinity or degree of 0 is equal to negative infinity. And if you, if you extend the rules of arithmetic, you find that yes, infinity is equal to n plus infinity for any non-negative integer n, and negative infinity is also equal to n plus negative infinity. So those are two candidates. Now what we need to do is eliminate the possibility of infinity. And that's where the first identity is going to come in, or the first relation. g is equal to negative f. So what we get is that degree of f minus f is equal to, or less than or equal to, the max of degree of f comma degree of f. And this is equal to the degree of 0. And this is equal to the degree of f, which is some non-negative integer n. So we want degree of 0 to be less than or equal to all possible non-negative integers n. So that means degree of f can't be infinity. And we're left with just negative infinity. So that's the only candidate that we have, the only viable candidate. So let's make sure that degree of 0 equals to negative infinity makes sense. Just Let's just do some uh, sanity checks. So the first one is, notice that 0 equals to 0 times f. That means that negative infinity is equal to the degree of 0, which equals to the degree of 0 times f, and that should equal degree of 0 plus degree of f for any polynomial f, including the possibility that f equals 0. And that equals negative infinity plus degree of f. And that's true. Negative infinity is negative infinity plus anything, even if f equals to negative infinity itself. So that's our first sanity check. Our second sanity check is that for 0 equals to f minus f, which we looked at earlier. We're just going to look at it more explicitly now. We get negative infinity is equal to degree of 0. And that's equal to the degree of f minus f. And that should be less than or equal to the max of degree f comma degree f which is just degree of f and that's true negative infinity is definitely less than degree of f even if a degree of f is equal to negative infinity and our final sanity check is something that we haven't done yet it's f equals to f plus 0. That means degree of f is less than or equal to max of the degree of f comma degree of 0. And that is equal to 
the max of degree of f comma negative infinity and degree of f is definitely greater than or equal to negative infinity so we get degree of f and that's true because degree of f has to be less than or equal to the degree of f okay so that takes care of all of the sanity checks that I can think of so that means the degree of zero is best stated as negative infinity as a convention by extending the rules of arithmetic. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.